Welcome to the chapter B4 of the textbook on sustainability management. In this chapter, we will talk about the stakeholder group of civil society, a very heterogeneous group. We will talk about non-governmental organizations and how they influence companies in their endeavors towards sustainability. After reading this chapter, you will be able to first explain the role of civil society as the third sector. So we have the market sector, so companies, we have the state sector, governments, and civil society is nowadays perceived as the third sector next to these two, and give examples of actors in all three sectors, as well as potential hybrid forms between these sectors. You will know that the power exerted by civil society actors is really important nowadays and should be considered in sustainability management because it's relevant for companies. You will be able to characterize NGOs, so non-governmental organizations, and distinguish different types of those organizations along two dimensions. First dimension is the beneficiaries that they have, and the second dimension is the activities that they conduct. You will learn that NGOs can be very heterogeneous. They can be categorized in self-benefiting and other benefiting NGOs and on advocacy and service NGOs. You will then be able to give examples for different NGOs activities and tactics and learn that they um, try to further their cause by influencing others, in our case here companies, and their activities vis-a-vis -vis companies can range from being positive to being hostile with many um, steps in between. You will also be able to name various firm specific risk factors that increase the likelihood of confrontation with these NGOs. For example, some companies are more prone due to the fact that they generate large externalities or due to the fact that they are near to the end consumer and visible to the end consumers and there are several other factors. Furthermore, you will be able to explain potential benefits and also risks and challenges of cross-sector partnerships, cross-sector partnerships being partnerships with NGOs on the one side and companies on the other side. Um, and you will be able to name these benefits, risks and challenges for both sides. So companies and NGOs can benefit in numerous ways from mutual partnerships, for example, they can gain expertise from the others, they can access specific resources the other side has, does not have, but these relationships can be complicated due to the very different backgrounds uh, that these types of organizations have. So it's really hard sometimes to understand each other, basically. You will also be able to explain various factors companies should consider when selecting partner organizations from the third sector. Um, the partners should be relevant for the given issue that is to be tackled, depending on what the company wants to achieve. Partner resources should be adequate, the partner approach should be fitting, and there should be at least some basic cultural fit between the partnering organizations. You will also be able to explain best practices for partnership management. And you will learn that partners will should be willing to share power, find consensus, clarify how decisions are being made in these cross-sector partnerships, and they should set expectations for these partnerships. So what do they want to achieve? And they should build on a uh, mutual understanding for the other side. And finally, you'll be able to differentiate different types of partnerships depending on their scope and their intensity. And you'll learn that there are different forms of cross-sector partnerships that range from reactive partnerships or philanthropic partnerships over to transactional partnerships to then finally integrative and really transformative partnerships. And you will learn what that is, what that means, and we'll have several examples in the book. Regarding the features that we'll cover, we have a feature on faces of sustainability. Again, Naomi Klein, the activist, the anti-corporation activist basically, and her influence on companies will have features on sustainability in society. An interesting one, um, targeting companies using their own weapons. You'll see here the billboard on the picture. That was an activist campaign basically hijacking the um, advertising, uh, the climate advertising by HSBC, the British bank. Then we'll have another example of uh, sustainability in business, Shell again, and the outcry on the Brent Spar. That was an oil drilling platform. And the idea was to dispose it 
at uh, the sea and there was a huge campaign by Greenpeace. And then we have a um, final example here, sustainability in society again, the foundation of the Marine Stewardship Council by the WWF and Unilever. So that is an example of one of these partnerships. And the Marine Stewardship Council, you might know that from seafood that you buy, um, it's, a, it's a seal, a logo, a label for more sustainable fishery. So that's it about this chapter.